what's going on everybody hope you're having a good day today so by now you've probably watched my video about backpacks in the beginner series and all the different types if you haven't go watch it uh, but when I was asking about what people would like to see in that video there were quite a number of people saying they wanted to see just how to pack a backpack so that's what we're gonna do now um, I've got the ULA circuit pack here which is a 68 liter ultralight backpack, weighs about two pounds. Um, does still have a frame in it, so it can carry 30, says 35 pounds. I don't know that I'd really wanna carry 35 pounds in it, but it says it can do it. Um, so a pack like this for me is usually pretty perfect. Uh, I'm not gonna go back over everything I just talked about in the other video, but as far as what type of pack is perfect for you, that video should answer your questions. This is pretty much everything I would take if it's temperatures are going to be anything from 55 degrees as a low to down to about 30. Lower than that, some of the stuff I would start to switch out. So this covers the bulk of my backpacking. So we're not gonna talk about the gear really very much at all. This is purely just loading the backpack and then what we'll do is throw the pack on and talk about how to properly adjust your pack and how to tell if your pack fits or not. So for me, the first thing I do with a pack like this, now this pack, if you didn't watch that video, this is more of just an ultralight pack. So it's just one big main compartment, a couple side pockets for water bottles, big stretchy mesh pocket on the outside, and then a couple hip belt pockets. So it doesn't have a ton of, doesn't have a lid, doesn't have a ton of extra pockets, but that's okay. I'm not one that's typically too crazy about organization. Um, I've done this enough that I usually, I pack everything the same every time. So that's that definitely would be the first tip. Once you figure out how to pack stuff, pack it that way every time. The last thing you wanna do is be looking around in the middle of the night for your headlamp you didn't get it out before it got dark and then you don't know where it's at. I always put stuff in pretty much the exact same spot every time so I know where pretty much everything is at any time. Um, you also want to pay attention to weight distribution. Uh, when you're packing a pack, you, you want to pack it so the bottom has a little bit lighter weight stuff. Most of the weight in your pack, you kind of want to try to keep the heavier items towards the middle of your back, kind of like right in here that way it's above the hip belt but not up at your shoulders if it's up at your shoulders it's going to pull down too much push you forward if it's too low it's going to do the same thing and pull the pack at a weird angle <clears throat> you want it right in the middle of your back if you can if you can help it a lot of this stuff is pretty lightweight though so it's not as huge of a concern um, if you're really carrying bulkier, heavier gear, then you need to pay a little bit more attention to it, but you'll see kind of how I do it. And I'll talk about when I'm packing something specific because of that. For me, most of it is I try to organize it in the way that I would want the gear and want to get to it. Um, so the first thing I put in here and you'll see, I don't use a lot of stuff sacks either. And I'll talk about that as I'm doing it, but I line all my packs with a pack liner. So this is like a Nyla Flume pack liner. Um, you can also do like, you can also use trash bags. I would do trash compactor bags. They're a little tougher. I'm not even sure why. I think I, I think Gossamer Gear sent me a thing of these. So I use them, um, but they're, they're durable. They're waterproof. So that's the first thing I will put in the pack. So once that's in there, first thing I put in here is my quilt, so I use quilts. I got some sleeping bags. Most of the time I use quilts, it's a 20 degree quilt. Um, I'm not gonna need this until I'm setting up camp. There's really no reason I'd ever pull this out beforehand. And obviously I want it to stay dry. So this goes in here and I just stuff it down in here versus using like a stuff sack. When you use the stuff sacks, a lot of them are shaped in a way that creates like a ball and you end up with unused space around it. So doing it this way and just kind of smashing it down fills out the bottom of the pack and uses all this space. 
From there, I just start shoving in clothes. So these would be like my sleeping layers and stuff. Again, I'm not gonna wear till I get to camp. So socks to sleep in. Go down in here and just fill some space. Shirt to sleep in. And then some pants to sleep in. So just kind of fill all those dead areas. Um, in this pack, so on a trip, it, unless it was going to be really, really cold while I was hiking, um, I will shove a thin pair of gloves and a wool beanie down in here as well. This would be one of the things if I was using like more traditional packs, this stuff would probably go up in the top lid. So I had access to it if I needed it. But if that was the case, then I would just store it at the top of the pack. But on most average trips, I just have these just in case or at camp. I'm not going to need them on hiking. So those will go down in there. <clears throat> My down jacket as well. Again, I carry a different mid layer that I'll show um, that stays up at the top of the pack. If I need to take it, take it out and put it on, like it just gets really cold while I'm hiking or um, taking a break for lunch. If you watch my clothing video, you kind of know how that layering system works, but really I'm never going to break this out until I would get to camp and be done for the day. So this gets shoved down in that pack liner as well. And then I always take a pillow. So then I will shove the pillow down in there. And then the last thing that I will shove in the dry bag is my sleeping pad. So this will go down in here as well. This is all just stuff. I'm not going to need it while I'm hiking and I definitely don't want it getting wet. So once all that is in there, then you just kind of twist the dry bag or the pack liner, push all the air out of it as much as you can, twist it off and just kind of tuck it on itself so it stays that way. Obviously, if I were to fall into a river and completely submerge this, water could probably get into that. You can buy actual dry bags that twist down and clip that would be better for that. I'm not really worried about that, but I've used, I've done this this way for what, nine or 10 years I've been doing this. Um, for rain and stuff and nothing has ever gotten wet in this and, and I've hiked in spots where water I, was above my waist crossing a river so it was getting the bottom of the pack wet and nothing in this pack liner got wet so that works for that. So once that's done and you can kind of see down in there it's about here. So we've got a ton of space left in this pack. Again this one's a 68 liter pack and so it really gives you a lot of room if you've got bulkier stuff, uh, if you're carrying a lot of food, um, things like that. So from there, now I'll put my food in. So now we're right about to the middle of my back. So this is where I would put my food and I'm gonna put it in here and keep it close to the back. There's not really much oatmeal. Ah, it's trying to figure out what it sounded like sand. There's not really much in this because I don't really have any backpacking food right now, but this would be bigger. And I just shove this down in there so it's sitting right about the middle of my back. That's typically the densest and heaviest stuff I'm going to carry is my food. Um, the next thing I will put in for me is my electronics, like my battery bank, my chargers. Obviously, I film a lot, so I've got a 20,000 milliamp charger that weighs a little bit. So I put this next to the food as well, because that's another heavier item. So that weight is right there in the middle. Uh, from there, then I'll take my cook kit. So this is my stove, cook pot, collapsible mug. We just kind of stuff that in there and kind of stack it on top. Now we're just kind of filling space, okay? Fuel can goes in here as well. Um, this is my jump door bag, as I affectionately call it. So that goes in here as well. Um, now that does have first aid type stuff in it too. So I could put it on the outside of the pack. Um, 
I just kind of always put it in there. I've, I've never had a problem. I know where it's at. I can get to it pretty quick. So I'm not really worried about it. Um, the next thing that'll go inside here then is my tent. So this one is the X-Mid tent. Um, so this is pretty compact, um, but even if it was a bigger tent, I could fit it in here. But then this just kind of sits horizontally right kind of on top of that stuff like that. And then I will take my fleece, my this one's my Melanzana one, whatever that mid layer is, and kind of fill, kind of fill the space around that. Just so the, just so nothing's moving around too much. And that's that. And you can kind of see, maybe, you can kind of see in there, basically, we're right about to the top of the suspension. So I'd have plenty of space for that extra food. I could fit three to four days worth of food in this pack and still be comfortable. That's why I like this pack, is you've got that space. Um, again, you gotta have some fairly lightweight gear to make this stuff work, but this works for me. And then we just roll this down, pull the compression strap snug on each side, to keep things from sliding around in there. Okay, so that's the main pack loaded up, okay? On the outside of the pack, on the stretchy mesh kind of pouch here, try to pick this up so you can see. So this pack has the big stretchy mesh front pocket, which I love on backpacks. Um, the more traditional ones maybe don't have a big thing like this. They may have a little bit of this, but they'll have other pockets. Um, my more lightweight traditional REI one has, has a stretchy mesh pocket, but not as big. It's also got the lid. So some of this stuff would go in the lid instead of in here. But on this one, I'll take my tent stakes, put those down in there. Uh, let's see. Pack cover. I always carry a pack cover. Again, I don't, these are not waterproof. Yes, all my stuff I really need to keep dry is in a pack liner, but I just don't want all this getting wet either. So I take a pack cover. I gotta set this down. I can't do it right. I always take a pack cover. It just makes sense to me. Pack towel. Um, I started carrying these when I kind of exclusively started using single wall tents to wipe condensation and everything off, wipe pots out, whatever, rinse it out in the creek. These are handy to have and it's not like they weigh anything. Shove that down in there. Toilet paper, kind of self-explanatory. Uh, my little metal match spark thrower more sentimental than anything to me. That comes every time. No, you don't have to bring this. I bring it because I like it. Water filter. So I just put this in the stretchy mesh on the outside so I can get to it easier. And if it's wet, then it's not leaking inside the pack. Um, my titanium spork spoon titanium spoon if i'm taking this because it's the long handled one i keep it on the outside if i put it in my food bag it makes it shaped weird i also have collapsible ones if i take those those usually go in the food bag but so this guy is here we're gonna put him right down the side uh, always know he's there and then rain gear so i guess if i was packing this I guess if I was packing this for a trip and I wasn't expecting any rain, I would probably put this in first because I'm not really going to need the rain pants and I may want to get to my water filter first. But because of the order I packed it, we're going to pretend that this may be a rainy trip. So this is more on the top. So I'll shove the rain pants down in there. And then rain jacket. This I'll usually always leave near the top of the stretchy mesh pocket because you never know when you might catch a breeze or a little bit of a chill and sometimes that's nice to just take the chill out. That is that 
with that stretchy mesh pouch and this could still come out you could fit a little more in here but these are just handy to be able to shove things um if it was like a super wet night and my tent was all wet especially like if it's a double wall where you can separate the rain fly um, you could shove the rain fly in here so it doesn't get everything wet and just put your tent body inside um, if it's a single wall tent you just shove the tent in here so you can pull it out on lunch stop and let it dry out you've got some options i just i like pocket i like packs with the stretchy mesh pocket on the front um and then depending on the trip if i'm going with other people i usually take my chair um so i can sit out around a campfire with people and whatnot if i'm just going by myself a lot of times i've just been taking the little z rest pad it's nice as an extra pad underneath your sleeping pad um you can lay on it by the fire uh, just you get a lot of uses out of this so it just kind of depends on the trip but that will go right on the top <clears throat> and then just take the big strap over the top of it and cinch that guy nice and tight so your sit pad doesn't go anywhere and that's it for that. On the side pockets, that's where I'll put water bottles. So I'll just put my Nalgene in one. And this pack, actually, these are big enough. You could fit some extra stuff in there. Like I could fit, you can fit that Nalgene bottle in there. I could fit a saw in there if I want to take a saw as well. Um, you got a whole nother one on the other side. If you're carrying smart water bottles, it'll actually fit two in here next to each other too. So I would put a different water bottle on this side as well. And then <clears throat> the hip belt pockets. I always take chapstick in one. So my right side will have more of the utility stuff. Chapstick, hand sanitizer, headlamp. Um, if it's you know summertime, sunscreen will go in there. Bugs, I've got a little bug like head net I'll put in there and then the other hip belt pocket would be for like snacks and stuff And then the last thing I do is take my Garmin satellite unit and clip it to One of the shoulder straps, so it's right there And boom That is the backpack all loaded up So that's how I load a pack like I said, it, it doesn't really change much, even if it's the more traditional style. Just some of the stuff that's in here, some of the little gadgets, water filter, um, spoon, little odds and ends stuff might go in lids or different pockets uh, if I've got them. But for the most part, it's exactly the same. And I do it the same way every time. So that way if I know, oh, it's getting dark, I need my headlamp, I know exactly where it's at. If I gotta go to the bathroom, I know exactly where my toilet paper's at. If I need to filter water, I know exactly where that's at. Um, just anything. Okay, so now we got the pack all loaded. So now we're gonna talk about how you correctly pick the right size and how you adjust the backpack once it's on. So most backpacks are gonna come in different torso sizes or just sizes in general. Some are very adjustable. Um, a lot of the more traditional packs you can buy, they still have the sizes, maybe like small, medium, and then medium, large, but you can adjust the frames. A lot of the more ultralight ones don't have that. There's, there's no adjustment as far as making the torso taller or shorter. So you've got to make sure you order the right size. The way you do this <clears throat> and the simplest way I can describe it is you want to measure from the spot on your neck. If you, if you bend your head down and you feel where part of your spine essentially points out. See, it's like right here. Everybody's different. You measure from there down to the top of your hips, not your waistline. This is one of the big things I see people do wrong is they want to set their pack on their waist, like right where their belt is. And that's not what you want. You want it up on your hips. So it's actually hugging your hips. That way the weight is supported correctly. So what I tell people is you measure from there and then essentially point kind of like right at your belly button 
and just right around. So where my thumbs would be pointing at each other, that's where you'd measure down to. That makes my torso right about 19 inches, um, which sometimes is an odd size. It's kind of like right in the middle of a medium and a large for some manufacturers. Um, if that happens to you, and it's not one that has a little bit of adjustment with it, I would size up. Um, if you go too short, your load lifters and everything are gonna pull at an angle either straight or down, and that's gonna put all that weight on your shoulders. You want, and you'll see it when I put this pack on, your load lifters to be more at like a 40 to 45 degree angle. You don't want them straight up, because then you're putting unnecessary tension on the frame, and a lot of times your shoulder straps can't fit you right. But I'll show you what this should look like. As far as putting one of these things on, it is, it's literally not as simple as just throwing it on because if you don't get this adjusted right, even the best backpack that's loaded correctly and is the right size for you is, is going to be miserable. So the first thing you want to do <clears throat> is make sure all your straps are loosened. Like don't, don't leave these tight when you take them off. For one, it'll be kind of a pain to get off and you'll never get it put back on correctly. And two, there's, there's kind of an order to this. Um, you want to do it a certain, in a certain order, otherwise it's not going to fit you right. So you want to start with your hip belt. And again, don't be this guy. This is on my waist. Right now, even if I cinch this hip belt tight, you can kind of see, I mean, you can see it somewhat, but this is pulling straight back. All of that weight is sitting below my hips. So there's nothing for the hip belt to hold. It's gonna compress my legs and put unnecessary strain on my legs, but it's not gonna hold the weight correctly. So what you want is, usually I just use my belly button as a guide. Ow, and don't pinch your finger. I use my belly button as a guide. Get that in there. And then you wanna cinch this hip belt pretty tight. Now this one's got a couple different straps that go across the top and the bottom, so it really hugs your hips really well. But you want that pretty tight. It doesn't always make for the most attractive look, but that's just part of it. So once that's done, you kinda of wanna pull these so that it pulls the pack up against you. I'll strap the sternum strap, I'll attach it but I won't tighten it yet. And while we're talking about sternum straps, I've seen people do this different. You don't want to weigh up on your neck. <laughs> you don't want to cut off, you don't want to cut off circulation and choke yourself out. You don't want to weigh down here. Two fingers, kind of measure from your neck down. That's about where you want it. All that does is keep these straps from sliding. That's, that's all you want. You don't compress the crap out of this. And, and choke yourself, because then you can't breathe, but you don't want these straps sliding. So I get it clipped, and then grab your adjusters on your pack, or on your straps, and cinch these down pretty good, like that. So now, this is stuck to me. My GPS unit almost sent flying. This is hugged against me pretty good. So hip belt's good, and I can feel there's no tightness in my shoulders. And then you've got your load lifters here. And these, you just kind of snug. You should feel a little bit of pressure come off your shoulders, but not a ton. What you don't want, I'm trying to show this, you can see how this shoulder strap rounds around and still curves down slightly. So it's fitting the shape of my shoulders. If this was going up and there's too much space in here, you've probably got the wrong, you've got a torso that's too tall. You want it to curve around your shoulder some, not pulling way down, but enough of a curve that it fits. And then you don't want a huge, like you don't want a huge gap here. You want it to fit. It shouldn't be pulling on your shoulders, but it shouldn't be floating way up here either. It should just kind of be a nice comfortable in between. And then once that's done, now I can kind of mess with, maybe loosen this just a tad tighten this a little bit just to keep the straps from going into my armpits uncomfortably and tighten this again. 
So now, like I said, it doesn't make for the most fashionable thing, but now this is comfortably riding here. It's not making for any discomfort anywhere. It's not causing any discomfort anywhere. Um, technically, and you can see, so you can see the low lifters are at a good 45 degree angle. Technically this pack, I'm on the very, very, I should be in a medium, this is a large. Um, I can make it work by adjusting these straps and that's fairly unique to this ULA pack. It's, it's got a little bit of a, a little bit of forgiveness, I guess you could say. I can, I can adjust it a little. I would be fine with this, but you can't really tell from the video. Maybe you can. These, there's just a little bit of a gap in here that I can't really comfortably get to go away. Um, I can fiddle with it some. It's not hurting anything. Like this feels very comfortable. The load lifters are at a 45 degree angle. I wouldn't want to pull too much more on this because I don't want to bend that wire frame. I mean, it's a little bit flexible, but right now that's at a good angle. So it's pulling the weight off of my shoulders. That's why I can fit my fingers under here. So it's not clamping down on my shoulders and it's transferring all the weight to the hip belt. And when I move, other than that swinging GPS unit going everywhere, it, it doesn't go anywhere. So, that's how you correctly adjust a pack. So if you've never done it before and you're not 100% sure, um, you know, a lot of stores will do it for you. A lot of out, you know, stores that sell the gear, they should know how to fit you for a backpack. If they don't, I don't know that I'd be buying gear from them, but they should be able to do it. And a lot of times they'll let you put some weight in the pack and kind of wear it around and see how it rides. Like this has a full load other than water. Um, and even though this is technically probably a little bit too big on the torso, um, you know, I don't know that I would want it any smaller. So if I go with the smaller size, this may not be at the right angle to actually pull weight off of my shoulders. It, it probably would, but you're always better to go a little bit on the large side than on the short side. If you get a short, too short of a torso, it's just going to put all the pressure on your shoulders and nobody wants that. So... That's about the best advice I can give for getting a backpack adjusted, um, getting the right fit, packing. Um, it's, it's just kind of a, it's kind of a routine, but you just kind of follow the basic simple principles of, you know, you want lighter stuff down here, try to keep the heavier stuff right in this area. So that weight's sitting right on your hips, lighter weight stuff at the top. So the pack's not doing one of these. Um, anything on the outside of the pack, you don't ideally don't want it to be too heavy because it's going to throw your balance off. Uh, you don't want a bunch of dangly, heavy stuff hanging off. It just it throws your weight off. Uh, and if you're hiking uphill, hiking on a ridge, the last thing you want is a little bit of weight going the wrong direction and and yanking you down. So uh, it, maybe it's just personal preference. I don't like a lot of stuff strapped to the outside of my pack. Some people do. Um, even on the Osprey pack that I showed in the other video, it's got the straps at the bottom, like to strap a sleeping pad or something too. Like I'd strap this there, uh, strap my chair there. If it's one of my like freestanding tents that have tent poles, I've strapped the tent poles there. But I don't really know that I would be strapping a sleeping bag to the outside of that or like an inflatable sleeping pad or I don't even really like the idea of strapping a tent to the outside of my pack. I don't want to tear one of those up or get it all rained on or anything like that. I'd rather get that stuff inside the pack. So hopefully between these two videos, you got some good info out of it. At the very least, maybe it points you towards a style of backpack that you want to go for. Maybe this video answered some questions on how to fit and properly wear a backpack, but it's, it's probably the most important part out of everything we're going over in this series. Um, you got to get the right backpack and don't let other people's videos sway you one way or the other. Thanks for watching the videos. I got more coming in the next week or so. Have a good day.